Let's look at scene two. So this is after young Goodman Brown has left his wife, Faith, explained to her that he just has to go do this. Presumably he's just really curious about what's out there in the woods. He already knows that some kind of event might be happening and he wants to go see it. So the second scene is as he's walking through the woods and he's a little bit frightened. The woods symbolize the unknown, the scary, the untamed, the uncivilized. So he's out there in the wilds. He thinks maybe there's evil lurking everywhere. He projects his own fear and his own worry about evil onto the trees, onto the wind. Everything is scary. And he says at one point, what if the devil himself should be at my very elbow? And sure enough, right at that moment, he meets a person. He passed a crook in the road and looking forward again, beheld the figure of a man in grave and decent attire, seated at the foot of an old tree. So that gives a sense that this man is comfortable here. He's sitting down. He was kind of expecting Goodman Brown. And this man looks normal. He's garbed, that means dressed, in regular clothing. He doesn't have a pitchfork or horns or anything like that. He just looks like a normal person. But he seems to be waiting for Goodman Brown. In fact, he says, you are late, Goodman Brown. Faith kept me back a while, says young Goodman Brown. Now, Faith, his wife, kept him back, meaning the goodbye scene made him late. But Faith kept him back as well, his religious faith, because this whole journey is a journey into the darkness, into evil. And his faith kept him back a while. He almost reconsidered, but oh, he went. So the encounter with this man, we get a sense that he resembles young Goodman Brown. It says, bearing a considerable resemblance to him, though perhaps more in expression than in features. So why would they have this man look like Goodman Brown? Or why would Hawthorne make that comparison? I think he wants to say that these two are not so very different. And in fact, that humans in general may look at the devil and recognize themselves in evil, or that evil can take the shape of any of us or work through anyone. Young Goodman Brown resembles the devil this time. So let's look at this travelers more carefully. He resembles Goodman Brown, and also he had an indescribable air of one who knew the world. Well, now this is different from young Goodman Brown because young Goodman Brown is naive and inexperienced, whereas this man has an air. That means he carries himself and speaks as if he knows the world, as if he's well acquainted with the world. This gives him an edge, an advantage over the young Goodman Brown. He appears as an authority, whereas young Goodman Brown is so, such a newbie. What else about this man? He knows the world, he looks like Brown, and he carries a staff, which bore the likeness of a great black snake, so curiously wrought that it might almost seem be seen to twist and wriggle itself like a living serpent. Well, that is unusual. This man is carrying a staff, kind of like Gandalf from Lord of the Rings, but it is shaped in such a way that it looks like it's writhing or sh moving. It looks like a snake, and it's black. Another obvious symbol of evil, and he's the guide for young Goodman Brown on this journey. So young Goodman Brown is not in safe hands. Now, sensing this, young Goodman Brown does say, stop, wait, I don't want to do this. His first refusal to go is shortly, he says, friend, exchanging his slow pace for a full stop. Having kept covenant by meeting thee here, having kept our agreement by meeting you, it is my purpose now to return whence I came. It's my plan to go back where I came from, back home. I have scruples touching the matter thou wottest of. <laughs> okay, the I have scruples means I have principles, I have morals touching this matter that you have talked about to me. 
So this place they're going, this destination, he says, mm, I have some concerns about this. My, my conscience is bothering me. I better go home. Well, naturally, this traveler, this evil figure, is not going to let him go home. But he doesn't force him. He's very cunning. He's conniving and convincing. So the traveler says, Sayest thou so? Smiling, let us walk on nevertheless, reasoning as we go. And if I convince thee not, thou shalt turn back. So he says, look, uh, let just let me talk to you for a while. And if you still want to go home, you can. We are but a little way in the forest yet, right? We just started. We're only a little ways in the forest. But young Goodman Brown says, too far, too far. I've already gone too far. He knows this is such a bad idea. But he does unconsciously resume his walk. So he just keeps walking. He's not strong enough to just turn around and leave. Now, one of the reasons he feels bad and his conscience is bothering him, he says, my father never went into the woods on such an errand, nor his father before him. We have been a race of, on a race of honest men and good Christians since the days of the martyrs. Now, young Goodman Brown is very proud of his heritage, and the image he has of his family is that it is a upstanding, moral family, good Christians, and we've always been, you know, upstanding men. Well, this evil figure, this devil, has news for young Goodman Brown, and he says, guess what? I knew your father really well. I knew your grandfather. I was right there when they were doing evil things. And he lists some of those evil things. He says, I helped your grandfather, the constable, when he lashed the Quaker woman so smartly through the streets of Salem. So he uh, lashed the Quaker woman. It means that this woman who was of a different religion, a peaceful Quaker religion, he lashed her. He whipped her. That's bad. <laughs> of course, he did that because he had this moral religious superiority. He thought he knew what God was about and what religion should look like and that she, the Quaker woman, did not. So we see the hypocrisy there and Hawthorne is certainly pointing out hypocrisy in the Puritan religion in the past, we've already had reference to Salem, now we have another reference to the past, persecution of Quakers, and uh, young Goodman Brown himself then is someone who thinks he's good, but is he really? These men thought they were good, but they were not. In fact, they were in league with the devil. The devil knew them. They were friends. But these men may not have realized that it was the devil that was at their elbow when they were doing these things, they might have thought they were doing what God wanted them to do. So Hawthorne is making a statement there about how people can be deceived, not really knowing good from evil sometimes. Okay, the next uh, moment that we need to look at is when 